Thanks, thanks, Chair, and thanks to all our witnesses. Um, I just want to start by saying some of the language used here and kind of a thesis by um, Dr. Finnegan and Professor Yo is deeply distasteful and very selective, to say the least. Um, and the language, I think, again, I think people should reflect on the language that they're using and some of the critiques, particularly Professor Yo, uh, because it doesn't stand up. Because if, if he's saying that in Canada, somebody, because they're in a situation of homelessness, can avail of assisted dying, that is literally trivialising the whole debate. And it's di deeply dis disrespectful to the issue. So again, I would ask you to reflect on what you've said. Um, so, and again, we're conflating issues that, you know, with assisted dying, with other kind of societal issues and kind of deep inequality in society. And again, again, it is not helpful to this debate. We're trying to have a, a civilized debate uh, that's very complex. Um, it can be difficult regardless of what your opinion on the situation is. So I would, again, ask people just to kind of uh, reflect on their, their kind of their, their statements and so forth. Just in uh, relation to Dr. O'Donovan. Dr. O'Donovan, I mean, I read your thesis. Uh, it's ex extremely good. Um, and I think, you know, hopefully, uh, we will see assisted dying available to those that want to avail of assisted dying in Ireland in the near future. I think that's very important. Um, public opinion um, points to that the majority of people in Ireland would actually support the legislative change, and that has been borne out by a number of opinion, opinion polls. And I think people in this country are open to this debate and want to see legislative change. Uh, just in relation to the slippery slope, because this is a bit of a kind of a red herring in relation to the, those that oppose assisted dying. Uh, and I think you put it very well that if, if uh, assisted dying was legislated in this jurisdiction, then it would le lead on to everybody wanting to avail of assisted dying. That is not the truth, right? That is not the truth. And anybody that wants to say different than that, I'd like to hear. Because it is kind of, it's the argument that, you know, this is, you know, anybody with an ailment then wants to die. What a ridiculous argument, right? What a ridiculous argument. Um, and I think that's important to kind of, um, to touch on. Which framework would you kind of envisage and that is working at the moment uh, that could be a model as a framework in Ireland in regards to assisted dying? Is there a framework that you would, you know, that would, would fit into the kind of, I suppose, the kind of, I suppose, where the Irish public could accept and legislators such as us, we're the ones that will legislate for this, that could be acceptable in the terms of uh, those that want to avail of us as the dying. Professor, you will first, please. Well, I'm, I'm sorry if there's deeply distasteful language. I'm not certain which part of my language it, it, uh, the senator finds distasteful. I do think that there's a, a, a problem with language. I think when you have, as you do in many jurisdictions, where death by purposely in ingesting deadly drugs is defined as something other than suicide, I think that's a corruption of the English language. And this is the case in California, in Oregon, uh, in Canada, where these kind of deaths are defined as the dying of the underlying disease. And it's simply not true. They're dying uh, by the particular drugs, the deadly drugs uh, that are, are actually given to these people. So. Um, can you just say which which distasteful language you're um, well, you, you're you said talking to me? About. Somebody availed of assisted dying because they were homeless. Now, can you yes. give evidence of that? Can you give evidence of that? Uh, yes, I can give evidence right, of that. Can you tell uh, us? Could you tell us? Not right now because I haven't got it <laughs> right on, in front of come me. Come on, come on. Yeah, I mean, come on. But, uh, I mean, come on. Well, come no, on. you you you've have asked. Look at, you've, you have put in your statement. Somebody in Canada has a veil of assisted dying because they're homeless. Can you give evidence of that? Yes, I can give. Well, evidence give it evidence. Of that. Can you give evidence? I haven't got the evidence in front of me. Is what I'm saying. He can't go into very precise details of it. 
I, 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 I mean, it, I it's extremely respect, selective. Yes, extremely have, selective. Have a look at the, have a look at the case. Okay. Um, well, if you're very so happily familiar send with it, it to you, I'll I'll very this. happily send it to you after. But can you uh, not say it here? Meeting. When said in your statement, I haven't got it in front of me. But I can give you the evidence. You're not credible, show... this, unfortunately. It's... You're not credible. You're not but, credible. But, well, it, it's not you know, you're saying say that. in a public forum like this. So what I would be saying, absolutely no problem. He can furnish it to us afterwards and it can be given to you. Well, if it's in your no statement, problem. Michael, you it, should be able to you yes, know, explicitly say yes, but, in a public but broadcast. Witnesses can't really go naming a person. No, I don't want to name anybody. I want to name the circumstances yes. that this happens. Yes. I can tell you about that. Yeah. The circumstances where there was a gentleman who, uh, by his disability that he had, he had a, a breathing disability, and he was um, signed off on assisted dying by one uh, doctor. He was seeking another. And then he went to the papers and said, I am seeking assisted dying because I am suffering, but I am suffering from the fact that I haven't got enough money that I, and I, that I haven't got a home. Uh, and... The point I'm trying to make is that you are able to do that so long in Canada, as long as you meet the criteria, other criteria, uh, then you can you can do that. And nobody can tell you that you can't. Uh, and that's in the, the Charter of Rights. And that's why this is quite dangerous. And you can find it as distasteful as you like, but that's the, the, that is, those are the facts. Well, I think you're doing being very selective. Very selective. Yes. Well, look, I, I, think, it's a, I think it's a matter that we'll... We'll come back to all right, and and yes, but witnesses don't have to give references in their opening statements, so we have to make that clear as well. I now, to, on the point of order, I, I think we can do better than we've all been in the situation where we're not in a position, but can forward later details. I think we can do better than attack our witnesses simply because something of what they propose we don't like. No, no, uh, no. Isn't no, there a courteous the way to ask no. for further and better particulars at a no, later no, date? No, no, no. No, 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 no. I find the professor's statement very distasteful. Yes, but very my job is to protect our witnesses in that they come here in good yeah. faith to give us yeah. information. And my job is to make sure that we treat them in a fair fashion as well. Yeah, I so think that's the point. So just a doctor Finnegan, because we're way over time on this, but I want to do the deputy justice by you will respond as well. Thanks, just briefly, I mean, any of the language I used in my statement or submission is language reflected in court judgments and the writings of bioethicists, including pro-euthanasia bioethicists. Various really important issues were raised, um, and I think a lot of this comes down to the question of how do we draw a line that allows euthanasia only in cases of terminal illness. I've challenged the idea that any such line is non-arbitrary and is coherent. And in response, Dr. Donovan justified the line by saying that outside of terminal illness, it is possible that life might improve. And it's worth testing that justification against the four basic rationales offered for allowing any euthanasia at all. Those four basic rationales were respect rational choice, autonomy, minimize harm and the idea that life's value can diminish in value according to the views of the person whose life it is. None of those four rationales fit with the idea that we ought to restrict euthanasia just a case of terminal illness. Each of those rationales individually and more so collectively well, justify... That's speculative. It's, not, speculative. it's a matter of just reasoning it out. You can think I mean, through the case the of someone terms, says, that's speculative. respect my rational choice, I'm not terminal ill, but respect my rational choice. I but, want to euthanasia. It isn't it's speculation. That's it's thinking. speculating. It's thinking. But it's, you're speculating. I'm not. I'm thinking. No, you're I can think it through. Um, we also mentioned was the issue of if you restrict euthanasia to case of terminal illness, you won't have people choosing euthanasia because they're a burden. But the data from Oregon contradicts that. In over 50% of cases in Oregon, uh, people report feeling a burden as one of the reasons but for choosing. You're using, you're twisting the language there. You're twisting the language. It's, it's really unfortunate. I'm reading that. the reports that are well, published it's and are available you're online. Unfortunately, you're using it's, you, you're, They're available for yourself, Jeff, if you yeah. want to look at them. I'm thinking and reading data, which is different from speculating. Well, um, and that figure, that figure, of, that figure of over 50% has risen um, by, has risen up from roughly 30% from when the law in Oregon was first introduced. The last point I just mentioned before we move on, sorry, was the issue of New Zealand, that New Zealand might be a restrictive model. The case numbers for the first year of the euthanasia operation in New Zealand was 328. 
whereas in Oregon it was 16. That's an absolutely massive increase from where Oregon was initially, and the population of Oregon now is not too dissimilar to the population of New Zealand, and New Zealand already has more euthanasia numbers than Oregon. Thank you all.